players below uh, you know three and four. That's not our concern. The only thing we have to do is talk to the kernel a little bit to figure out where to send the sockets. So by focusing on you know the higher level layers, we're not worried about a lot of lower level details that would just eat up our coding time trying to get it right. We focus on higher level concerns and that let us do more useful man in the middle type activities and application assessment useful code. Um, we have a concept of directions, uh, client to server and server to client. Uh, client to server is you know, from a victim to a server and then server to client is from a you know, destination server back to the victim. We use that a lot inside of our code base and here and there. Um, so if you hear us talking about that, that's what we mean when we say C2S or S2C. Um, and then plugins are called right in the middle, invoked by a protocol like HTTP, and uh, you know they just invoke certain methods, you know, depending on uh, what kind of plugin you're implementing. Um, so a uh, couple of quick notes on getting everything up and running. Uh, now that you're a little more familiar with the architecture. Uh, you use Mercur Mercurial, excuse me, and Bitbucket. Uh, Bitbucket is just a Mercurial, uh, you know, source code uh, management uh, hosting provider. And uh, essentially, you just uh, run the hg clone command and clone our repository, and you have all our Python code and the setup instructions and all that. Then you can just read the README. It discusses a little bit of the network topology you have to set up. It can be as simple as two VMs, which is uh, pretty simple these days. And then um, the setup file will tell you exactly how to configure the Mallory Gateway VM. Every package you have to install and even goes into setting up you know, Eclipse and uh, PyQt a little bit for uh, if you want to actually develop uh, Mallory code and not just uh, use the debugger. So it uh, walks you through setting up all the packages. Um, so if there are any problems with that, we'll give you, uh, we have, you can contact us by uh, hunting us down through our website or whatever. We're more than happy to help uh, people set it up. Um, we have command line options. They let you uh, change Keep some things. things. Uh, it is possible to run Mallory as a non-transparent aware proxy where it just takes data and forwards it on, but uh, that was just kind of a feature request because we are often, we often have Mallory set up and traffic running through a gateway and it's nice to just throw it off to some other destination some of the time. Um, you can change the, the traffic database, you know, proxify the traffic. Um, these were just some of the options, kind of a leftover slide actually. Um, we have a database, and data goes in the database, and it's really exciting. Um, uh, we capture all the TCP traffic and stuff it in a database, uh, so it, it'll just capture all that, and it's kind of a pretty reasonable and logical database schema. We capture UDP datagrams, we put them in the database. If you're interpreting traffic on a specific port as you know HTTP or you know SSH, then that data probably won't end up in the traffic database in the, in the exact form. The traffic database is just for TCP and UDP traffic that you're not really sure about what protocol it is. Um, but it's still useful to maybe run the application and have that SQLite database for post-processing. So you can you know, see, okay, where did this application go? What, did this, uh, what all did this device connect to? That kind of thing. It's just a little more friendly than, uh, than Wireshark for uh, manipulation from Python. Um, we have interactive interfaces. We have a debugging GUI that we've talked a lot about. We're going to show it off just here in a minute. Uh, we have a uh, we have a GUI interface. Uh, there's a inside of the code. There's inside of the code base. There's a command line interface that doesn't actually really do much. It's just to show and illustrate how uh, it's basically a prototype to see how you would talk to the XML RPC server that the debugger uses. Um, so pretty straightforward if you're going to look at the code. Um, now we're going to show off the, the GUI a little bit and just kind of give a quick tour of it. It's not terribly complicated, so Raj is going to drive a little bit of our uh, here. We have a, uh, so we have streams. So as, as data flows across it, and we're going to do some demos where all this data will populate, but we don't want to spoil the fun of the demo, I guess. <laughs> but um, essentially what we have here are streams where you see the direction the traffic came in, the link, the source port and destination, the destination uh, and the destination port, the, um, some just various data. It's pretty, uh, pretty standard. Just fills in a big table. And then you can look at the text in two views, a text view or a little hex editor we cooked up so that you can uh, you know, insert bytes, copy them, and then paste them and do whatever you want to them to write them to a binary file or whatever. Uh, and then there are just a few extra buttons to uh, intercept traffic. And when you do that, 
it tells the server to start sending traffic to the debugger. Um, and then you can auto send the traffic if you're not interested in programmatic modification just yet. It'll, it'll just keep forwarding the traffic. And then the second you uncheck auto send, the traffic will not be forwarded. Uh, you have to forward it manually by clicking the send button, send button with a particular stream highlighter. We'll make that all a little more clear. Uh, and then we have uh, the rule system that I talked about, which is uh, not too complicated, uh, just a few different fields that lets you configure what traffic is going to get sent to the debugger. And this is also where you control something we call the muck pipe, affectionately named that, because it lets you muck with data as it flows through the proxy. proxy. Um, it's basically uh, a, a net said style set of regular expressions that you can apply to traffic as it flows through the proxy. <clears throat> Some of the time you just want to do a really quick and dirty modification of data and this facilitates that. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's a quick tour of the um, interface. We're going to go over everything in a little more detail here shortly. Um, before we uh, get to our demos, I wanted to just talk a little bit more about the extensibility because we spent a lot of time designing the architecture to make it easy for us to implement new protocols and then implement plugins for those protocols. So that was really important to us because we were tired of throwing code away. So we wanted to have a nice home to live. And that nice home is completely dependent on how much time and effort you put into designing how you interact with uh, the man in the middle gateway. Uh, so we tried to make it neat and tidy. Uh, the documentation is pretty much uh, not complete yet. What, what software project ever has complete documentation? But uh, you know, we're going to work on that in the probably near future so that it's a little more clear how to implement uh, plugins. But there, there are quite a few examples now, so it, it shouldn't be too hard if you're relatively well versed in uh, software development or you know hacking up scripts and stuff. The the plugin code is probably the smallest part of the code base. All right. Um, so now we have a series of uh, quite a few different demos. Uh, All live demos. Yeah. Well, dun, dun, dun. not on the internet, but uh, <laughs> we, we're hitting our example.com server because we knew that the internet would probably hate on us for some reason. So uh, <laughs> that's that's how it goes. Uh, plus, who who knows what kind of man in the middle is on that uh, blue cable there. <laughs> so um, this was we we implemented SSH man in the middle, and it was just kind of a thing I did on a lark. It's not something that I've actually had a lot of use for in assessment, but I wanted to use that to feel out how I'm going to implement the architecture. And it turned out that you know SSH man in the middle with Mallory is really easy, and it's kind of cool. So uh, we'll, we'll show a little bit about uh, how we implemented SSH man in the middle here. Uh, so this is just a standard you know, putty SSH session that we're going to open up here. Um, and we're going to go to our example.com server, open it up, and uh, you know, you get the standard warning because obviously, you know, the host key has changed. But that's a lot of text to say you're about to be hacked. So uh, we're we're counting on the, you know people will not really pay attention to things like that. Um, and not only that, yes and no, will hack you. Only cancel will be safe. Ubuntu and Debian like actually take the take the appropriate steps where um, you know if, if the host key changes, it just drops you. So um, you know if you're doing it from command line, you're probably you have to like go edit the host file and delete the key. But anyway, enough of that. Um, so we log in and uh, you know, because we're, we, we have you know, plain text access to the, to the terminal that's coming up, which uh, is Lagging. thinking mightily. Yeah, hard drive. Uh, it's getting there. It's getting there. Who knows what's happening. Our virtual machines are now thinking. Thinking is Mallory running? Yeah. Okay. And essentially, what it's going to do is, uh, you know, when it when it pulls up, it will uh, it'll show a little uh, example of uh, <coughs> it injects a little bit of text in there, and uh, and then we can uh, come to our Mallory server, turn it into it, and it'll show you know all the man in the middle. To, uh, all the man in the middle the SSH sessions that we have currently. Um, who knows why it's not working? That's because no, no, it's supposed. To, we practice this like three times. All the host files are. Oh, there you go. There it goes. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we injected that text. Things just got real. So we could put any text on the console and log any of their keystrokes. Um, and on the on the um, on the. Uh, 
Mallory Gateway now, we can see their username and password that they typed. Um, so uh, just show a quick example of that. Uh, you can see our username and password that it captured. And uh, the really cool thing is, right now, Mallory is maintaining an active SSH uh, session with the intended destination, and it's authenticated. So now all you've got to do is tell Net or Netcat to, uh, to our Mallory server, and we see that we have a couple of active man-in-the-middle SSH sessions. Um, so we're just going to type in the number, which is just a little TCP listener. And what just happened is we have one transport, but the way SSH protocol works, you open up multiple channels. A channel if you're going to SCP files, if you're going to port forward, if you're going to get a virtual terminal, whatever. Um, and we just opened up another channel, uh, and it's completely invisible to the, to the end user that was just man in the middle. Uh, he doesn't know that his uh, authenticated transport was used for malicious purposes. So now you can modify a file or touch a file, and then we'll go over to our man in the middle session, and it should be pretty clear that uh, when we use the right command, that it uh, that uh, you know the file that we just created is uh, sitting there. This is the CLI test. Uh, so uh, that's um, that's just an example of a protocol. Basically, uh, my goal was to look at how hard it was to do this, and uh, it turned out not to be too difficult because there's a really nice uh, SSH library called uh, Paramico in Python that's written in Python, pure Python. So uh, that was pretty neat. That was a, a fun example of, you know, manipulating the architecture. Oh. Um, yeah, it's a few hundred lines of code, but most of it is, you know, demo and boilerplate type code. So that's SSH man in the middle, Mallory style. Um, play the slideshow. Mm. Yeah, all right, sorry about that. Uh, so, you know, we talked about implementing HTTP, so we're just going to kind of show that we're actually interpreting uh, HTTP requests intelligently on the wire. Um, and we're just going to kind of grep our log and show, okay, here's the HTTP request as it flows in. Um, so uh, we're going to pull up another demo for that. Um, so we're going to just pull up a standard web browser and make some requests to our demo server. The images are flipped upside down. It, it's really kind of weird when you look at images.google.com and all the images are getting flipped and stuff. I actually did that so I'd know when I was man in the middleing myself because I couldn't tell without some visual indicator. So that's where the image flipping started. <laughs> um, all right, uh, so now we're just going to look at the log real quick. Um, if it were TCP traffic, it would just say TCP protocol instead of HTTP.forward or whatever. So you can see, you know, git forward slash WordPress or whatever. Uh, so that's just letting us know that the HTTP protocol is what's being decoded on port 80. Uh, pretty simple and uh, straightforward example. Um, all right, so that's HTTP man in the middle. It's, uh, it's going to be... Uh, so uh, next example is uh, we're actually going to show off the, uh, the GUI that we've created for doing TCP manipulation. Um, so this is going to basically, we're going to turn off all the protocols and we're going to just interpret this traffic as TCP. We're going to say we don't know what protocol this is or we haven't implemented the protocol. And we're just going to launch the, uh, the GUI and then all the traffic from this victim machine is going to flow through, the, flow through the GUI until we tweak the rules to maybe just get at a specific protocol or something. So um, here's our Mallory gateway again. We're just going to run our uh, command to launch the GUI. All right, uh, so here's the GUI. It's, it's up. It's not intercepting the traffic yet. But uh, now we're going to turn it on, and uh, all the traffic will start flowing through the, through the uh, GUI. We're going to do the echo example. What's that? The echo example. Oh, yeah. We, we implemented an echo server just so you can kind of see a quick editing example of, you know, this is how you would edit traffic in a, as it's flowing through the gateway. And you can use this for you know, binary protocols or whatever. But we wanted something that was simple and intuitive in our demonstration. Yeah. All right, so. Uh, I just sent this. All right, so that's the uh, echo server running. And now we can see actual traffic running through the gateway. So it's just showing you the text in that text box, uh, you know, saying this is a test. Um, pretty simple. Uh, so now we've turned on interception, and we're going to see what happens when we're uh, trying to intercept all of that traffic. Uh, so now we're, he's, he's just typing in the string and press enter, and it didn't close the connection because the Mallory gateway is holding onto it. And we see that we have some unsent data. So it captures the first character just as a quirk of 